Hi everyone. Uh, today we'll see uh, one more transformation called SQL transformation. So this is an advanced transformation. Okay, so we frequently use in the projects. We'll see which scenario we are going to use the SQL transformation. Okay, so if you're going to interview also, they may ask, can you tell me what is my SQL transformation? Or else they may ask a question, can you tell me what are the advanced transformations you worked other than the default transformations? So what is advanced transformations? We have a transaction control, XML uh, transformation, or stored procedure, and we have a Java transformation. Like there are many, the, those are advanced. So as a beginner, you should, you should know only a default transformation is called uh, expression, lookup, router, filter, joiner, source qualifier, all this stuff. If you are like more experienced, so at least you should aware of this advanced transformation, how this thing, how, how those transformation works. And if there is a requirement, how to use this advanced transformations. So such scenario, even you are a beginner. So if you say, I, I am aware of this SQL transformation, I have implemented my project. So you can give some example. So entry will be impressed. So you, because you know the advanced transformation also. Okay, let's come to the point now. So what is SQL transformation? So SQL transformation, which is used to execute the scripts and queries mid of your mapping, then you may go with the SQL transformation. Suppose I have a source, I have a source qualifier, I have a filter, and I have a filter, I have a router, then I have some, some so on so transformations, then I have a target. So here I have some requirement to use a SQL query. Suppose I have a SQL query. Whenever I execute SQL query, I am getting some result. So, so other than the source qualifier, you cannot write the query here, right? Suppose there is some requirement. I want to execute my SQL query and I want to get the result. Such kind of things, you can use a SQL transformation. There, inside the transformation, you can write the query and you can get the data accordingly. Okay. So, this will be useful in mid of your mapping. You want to execute the SQL query, want to get some result based on that. So this SQL transformation will be used. Okay. So if you don't have such a requirement, you don't need to use the SQL transformation. So the only use of SQL transformation is if you want to get some result based on the query mid of your mapping, then you may go and use the SQL transformation. Else there is no use. So SQL transformation, we have two modes, query mode and script mode. So what is my query mode? Suppose there is a specific query I want to execute. I want to get the data based on that. Then you can use the query mode. Script mode is nothing but suppose you have a set of commands in one notepad or one file. I want to execute that. So you can use a script mode. So script mode, it consumes that particular file, whatever the commands they have provided over there or SQL statement you provided there. Based on that, it will give you the result. So such scenario, you can use the script mode. So today, just we see that what is query mode, how to execute it. Next session, we'll see the script mode. Okay. So now understood right? what is my SQL transformation. Okay. Now I'll just take a simple scenario here. Then I'll show you how to implement it. Okay. So now I have two source tables. Now you can see here. I have a employee ID and employee name. Okay. I have a employee ID and employee name in this table. And I have another table here. This one. Now you can see here employee ID and location. So my requirement is, so remember, we are doing this mid of the mapping, not in the starting or somewhere. So in mid of the mapping, my requirement here is, whenever the employee ID is matched with this table, with this table, then I want to get the corresponding location of the employee. Okay, that is what my requirement. 
So what I'm going to say here is whenever the employee ID match with this table, with this table, okay, then I want to return the appropriate location from the this particular table, okay? So this we are performing. So you can ask a question here. So why don't you go for a joiner? So joiner where we do? We do starting of the mapping. So again, inst again, if you want to perform this join, yes, we can do that. But the problem here is, mid of the mapping, perform this kind of join stuff, it will be very difficult. So you have to get the source, so two sources there, and you have to connect, you have to join in order to the target system. But in between, you have implemented many logics. So such kind of case, it will be a little difficult to use a joiner, right? So now I am saying that not join, not only join, so you can perform other stuff also. You can insert the data, you can update the data. So whatever you want, you can do that by using a SQL transformation. I am just giving an example. So this is my requirement. My requirement is whenever this employee ID match between these two tables, I just want to load the employee location. Similar way, you can write a insert query, update query, delete query, whatever you want, you can write a SQL transformation. So as for the requirement. So now my requirement is just based on the employee ID, load the corresponding location to the target system. Okay, so that is a requirement. Wherever the employee ID match between these two tables, just load that. Just a moment. Okay, so our requirement here is just based on the employee ID, I want to get the corresponding location where I want this uh, this uh, logic to implement it. Bit of the mapping, I want to implement this. So instead of using a joiner or something, I can directly use a SQL transformation. I can write a query over there. I can get the corresponding result. So this is the very easiest way. Okay, so now we'll see how to achieve this. So now I have a source. Just let's go to the mapping. I'm just creating yam underscore SQL transformation. Okay. So you just get the source. Okay. So now I have source one also, other source also I have. So what is my target? This is my target. Now you can see here employee ID and employee name. I am directly getting from the source and the employee location from where I am getting from this table SQL S1. So where I am doing all these things, mid of the mapping. Okay, so now I what I'll do is just I'll do some expression. Let's see. I have done these things. Okay. So namesake, I just take the expression. So real time you may have. And number of transformations before okay i just want to show so now after that what i have done i'm going to take a sql transformation now you see whenever you click the default mode is query mode and script mode you have after that so if you want to write some query go with the query mode suppose you have some script i mean a number of commands in one notepad or file then i want to use that yes you can go with that script mode and also you have to tell to this sql transformation what kind of database you are using it suppose you are now currently i am using a oracle so oracle should be configured suppose i am using sql server then you have to provide the sql server as a db type so that means appropriate or corresponding db you should enable okay then only it works so static connection, dynamic connection, static connection. Okay, so it's like 
normal connection how, how we select in the session so it's like static there. suppose you have some parameter file from that you want to use some connection go with the dynamic okay so there is an option called sql transformation will run passive mode so as i said initially it is active okay whenever you configure a sql transformation that acts like a active suppose if there is some requirement you want to use that sql transformation as passive then just enable this checkbox then automatically that's what i said initially is active or passive by default it is active suppose if you want to convert into passive then enable this checkbox so that's what if anyone asks the interview so sql transformation active or passive you can say both so but if you say both they may ask a question so which scenario it will be passive if you enable this checkbox it will be passive or else it will be active click on okay so now sql transformation is ready so now what you have to do the next step just drag and drop the ports from source that's it so now now you see here so this is the default port so if anyone on ask interview so what is the default port in sql transformation sql error so if any issue related to your syntax or something so whatever the query you have provided right that will be captured under this so whatever the error related to your query or your script that will capture here okay that is the default port so these two ports as output ports now employee id employee name but what is our requirement i want to load the employee location from other table so we go here go to sql ports and also note you have to provide this native types if uh, everyone knows that if you have a source and source qualifier there is a difference between the source definition data type and if you see the source qualifier data type it will be different so informatica convert that data type into informatica native data type okay so that's the reason you can see that the difference between okay difference between source and source qualifier uh, alas let me show you so now you can see here here is a number why it is small here because informatica converts that this original data type into informatica native data types so that's the reason you see this difference so similar way here you have to change the original data type so now if you see this is like a informatica converted data type but what is the original data type for this you can see here it is a number it is a var cap so this you have to provide in the sql transformation so now you can see here this is a number this is a var cap so that is what you have to provide this you have to provide for sure okay so how you get this values you just check in the source not in the source qualifier so this already source qualifier data types so this you have to provide so here output port so now this two are input and output you can see here input output coming from the source so now employee location we want right so that will be the output port you have to create manually employee location so it is a var cap right so now by default testing so here you have to say query mode right you have to write a query over here to get this so what is our requirement so i want to join this sql source and this and i want to whenever employee id matches between these two tables want to get the corresponding location for that so i am not using any joiner here i am going to write a query here okay let's get the query okay so s1 yes, <clears throat> Okay, so I'm just getting the query. You can paste it here. So remember, so whatever the output port you are providing here, that should match with your select query. Suppose you are having only one output port. 
but if you are writing n number of columns in the select class it will get failed okay so you have only one output port here so the query should be right for only this particular column okay so now so employee id i have not mentioned in the output port just remove this so this is the query where employee location sorry sorry employee id right employee id which is equal to that means this table employee id which is equal to this employee id employee id which is equal to source employee id this is a different table right click on this that's it the query is ready so like this you can write any query insert update delete whatever you want so i just mentioned that join condition which is easy to understand the similar way you can write any other query as per your requirement done connect it so employee id employee name location see here location from where we are getting by joining this and other table we are getting it so that's what i said if you have such requirement mid of your mapping you want to execute some sql script or sql query then go and use a sql transformation and which will be very useful okay so now your mapping is ready we'll go and generate a workflow for this next finish so now so what is your uh, workflow here is QLT. So so now see source source qualifier so target every sorry source and target connections are already there. But many people what I uh, observe is they will not provide a connection for this and they simply execute and they struggle. So now I will show you first of all. Let me show you. So now see here I have provided a connection for source and target but see here nothing is there so they assume that no need to provide a connection let me execute and show you it will get failed because you have to tell that where that particular query should be executed okay so now you see that now see it got failed so why you have not provided a connection for that where to execute the query or else let me show you the run properties see here failed to get the connection that means it is not able to understand where to execute the query so you have to provide the connection for that double click here go to this click on this go to relational so now you can see here able to provide the connection let's run my target whether i have a data or not Okay. I don't have any data in my target. Let's run now. See here. Four records got loaded. Let's execute and see. You can see here, right? So, 2000 and 3000 don't have a matching in the other table. So no location for that. 1,000 and 4,000 as a matching with the source. So appropriate location got loaded. Now you can see this records only matched. That's one. Now you see only 1,000, 4,000 IDs matched. So Bangalore Chennai got loaded. So this is what you can use a SQL transformation. This is very helpful. And if you know this transformation, so if in interview, if you say, I know SQL transformation also, you'll have a good impression because it's advanced transformation. Now see, there are many advanced transformation here. So everyone knows that, like I look up, as I said, right initially, the, all these transformations, everyone knows that. So if you know some advanced transformations, it's like adding some advantage. Okay, so this is about the query mode. So next session, we'll see how to use a script mode and how to configure the SQL transformation. That's all for today.